In the upper left, folks, in the blue, he is for the Shopify Rebellion. He is the genius surrogate's Lambo. And in the bottom right, in the red, the Slayer of Cyril back in Atlanta. It's Joun. And in fairness, when I say Xiaon is the slayer of Cyril, I, I say because he killed, he, he he took one map off of Cyril. But that is more than many Protoss can say, unless you're Geralt during the group stage. And that was after Cyril had locked up his first place in the group. But regardless, Xiaon is a extremely talented Protoss player. He has a bunch of really cool builds. Uh, he goes, he actually, the thing that I've been tracking, it's started to worm its way into the meta. Just a little bit. Is this concept of three gate glaive instead of four gate? It means you take a quicker third, you do a couple things out of there, whether it is uh, two gate Stargate, whether it is, or two Stargate, whether it is a bunch of other, whether it's into Robo behind that, there are multiple options. But it's this kind of cool meta evolution. And I know I say this whenever it happens, but there's really interesting meta evolution where players have started to realize that they need to they can maybe they can get a most most of the result while committing far less to it which allows them to be greedier and establish tempo and maybe look a little bit letter a li little look a little bit um or be play a little bit less all in than they might otherwise do So for now, though, um, probably not what we're going to see. Stargate is on the way, so no no Twilight opening coming in from Xiaon. Although, uh, Stargate into Adept is, is still a build. That's something that Xiaon, or excuse me, that Stats entered into the meta and pops up here or there. But again, somewhat doubtful. Now, what is possible, if we talk about Adept play just a little bit longer, is this thing that Hero has been doing, where he has three Adepts, which is a little more than you would normally get at that really in the early game. And then you dive adepts into one mineral line. And of course, it's only two to one shot workers, but that third one is a little bit extra. So even as one adept falls, you still have worker one shot potential. Then you dive the oracles into, say, the natural. And you shade the adepts into the main base, or more likely vice versa. And then you just have, uh, you force the Zerg to have to play at multiple positions at the same time. That makes life very complicated for them. Meanwhile, though, Lambo just expanding as quick as he can. Notice that he took the forward third. I, this is expected, especially as Zerg requires, for the most part, all six gas uh, and the minerals. So oh, I shouldn't say all six gas, right? Because the back. Well, yeah, yeah, because the Zerg requires all six gas and the back base has five. So in ZVP, I think in, in particular, Taking that back base at any one of your even first four bases is just not really all that great. But the Adepts will shade on the high ground and start to get a couple lings at the very least. But there are no workers in the mineral line and or the natural. So the Adepts are not going to get much of anything there. Oracle, I think, got two. So nice start, especially as, as the Adepts, they get out. So Lambo loses a couple workers, but I mean, it's, it's two. It's a couple lings. It really is not all that consequential. And now behind that, there we go. Char, uh, Twilight on the way, Forge on the way, but this is almost assur assuredly, almost certainly going to be Blink, although, where are we on gas count? Is that four? We're on four, yeah, this is going to be Blink. Um, there is a build that has become very popular. Ooh, 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 four HP, one more shot. But there is a build that is becoming more and more popular, which is, you kind of, oh, okay, never mind, there we go. Templar Archive's going down. Yeah. So this build that's become more and more popular is very much a counter to how Zergs have been dealing with the Blink Stalker Oracle style, where you get two Oracles instead of three for the most part, and then you go charge, you go Twilight, and you have this really powerful charge lot Archon timing. Because Zergs, for the most part, dealing with these Blink Stalkers, they've been getting quick plus one melee. They've been getting tons of Lings. 
and looking to knock them down that way. And that's not what you want is Lambo. Okay. There we go. Triggers the stasis. And it, it felt like he was a little bit too late, but he realized just in the nick of time. But the big deal here is I think that Overlord saw the Templar archives. And that means that we have the Roach Warren on the way, plus one ranged on the way. Uh, it's going to be much more Roach Ravager focused composition with Banelings in support rather than a Ling Bane with a couple Ravagers or something. So that is actually going to work out very nicely. The Archons will not be quite as impactful as they otherwise would be. And we can expect Lambo to get just enough Lings to deal with the charge lots on the ground. And this actually may incentivize Xiao to just go, to just go take a fourth base. Uh, because while this timing is powerful, it tends to hit right around 7.30 when plus one is done. Um, if it's scouted out, it's less powerful. And there we go. Fourth base on the way. Double Archons to defend. And by the way, folks, those of you that play Protoss, how excited are you that Archons, they can fit through the single gap wall? <laughs> it's, I, I think it's actually really powerful. I think it's actually really powerful for several reasons, but it's also just such a nice quality of life thing. You don't add, you don't recall your archons to defend me to play, and then suddenly just have six uh, six archons stuck behind the wall for forever. But it also means that I think we're going to see archon. We, we might. I mean, archons are expensive, but if archons can th fit through single wide walls, we might see archons as the kind of standard defensive unit in these kind of enlightened or protoss sim cities where there's one gap that stalker can be put in and nothing else well you put an archon in there that, that's not going to get broken and it actually can get in get out which is going to make zerg run by is even less effective well we're gonna have to see though because for now lambo he is sending everything across The build that was apocryphally called the Soul Stroll. And let's see whether it does have a soul anymore. Because right now, Ling is on the left side. They're not going to get that much done. Stasis Trap. How much is it going to get here? Oh, that's actually a really big one. But an Oracle has already fallen. Disruptor Shot is just going to whiff. But we're, start, we're going to start to see some of this creep go down. The creep tumors are not there just yet. Here come the roaches moving forward. Disruptor on the right side has to get something done. And Lambo's just buying time, waiting for his stasis to complete. But the Queens now, they're already starting to fall. And there we go. That's the shield battery overcharge down at the very least. These Archons, there's not he there's no healing for them. So one Archon will fall. Biles are actually going to kill one of the Overlords. All the Overlords are dead, but I think there are creep tumors now. So the Queens are a little bit more powerful, but they're going to get stasis away. But oh, Disruptor Shot is going to get one Ravager. That's just about that. Zell is coming from the left side. But the oh man, Lambo's doing such a good job here. Keeping the Ravagers safe in this buffer of roaches and lings all over the place. And the Biles now are going to land. We're going to see the Robo goes down. So no more Disruptors here. Lambo tries to desperately chase that one down. So it seems like reinforcements for Lambo are not really arriving. Disruptor is going to be massive, but the Disruptor falls anyways. The start reinforcements from Lambo felt like they were getting intercepted just a little bit, but now as more and more and more arrive, the shield batteries, the, the cannons, they're good, but that's only one pile in there, keeping them all alive. So it's going to be depowered, warp in, done. Cannons, dead. Shield batteries, unpowered. And Lambo takes a quick 1-0 lead over Alpha X. He shoves down in game one. In the upper right, folks, in the blue, he's up one, trying to put his team up two, and he just handed it off to Bion on a silver platter. It's Lambo. And in the upper left, in the red, folks, for Alpha X. Give him a hand. It's Jown. And yes, 1832, that is a trophy uh, from Lambo. Lambo has won some more local stuff, I think. I know I, he's he's never won a premier tournament. He's gotten damn close a couple times. Um, yeah, I was going to say, I think that's a Meisterschaft. Uh, he won Meisterschaft spring season 2015. I love looking at, at, at players, um, what's the word? Uh, at players like Wikipedia's because sometimes you just see weird things. Um, like for example, in 2020 in March, 
Lambo played a best of seven show match versus the Russian Terran Creed, who has done nothing. But the Harbingers team, who he was on at the time, just sponsored a show match between him and Lambo, and Lambo smacked him down hard. Um, but anyway, hey Pashke. But yeah, I believe that is the that is a Meisterschaft uh, trophy that is in the background uh, from Lambo. And it is also solidly winter in, in Germany, and we know that energy prices are have climbed sky high, so I can't blame Lambo for having jackets all over the place. But we got pretty similar builds coming in from Jean and from Lambo in game two, as was game one. Let's get a Stargate opener from Lambo and or from Jean and Lambo, we don't really know what he's gonna do just yet. The Zerg openers are extremely unless they're going for an all-in, the Zerg openers are extremely standard. So game one, we saw really Jaun not prepared uh, for the pressure coming in from Lambo because while Queen Walks are not really in the meta anymore, and they certainly do require a, a lair now just for the creep spread to make sure the Queens can, can transfuse. Ooh, not going to get... Wait, did he get the drone? He did. Okay, nice job there uh, from Jaun. Um, Moon Dance is such a short map that it becomes... that it feels viable. But anyways, for the moment, uh, yeah, Zhan, so Zhan was not prepared. He, he took a lot of damage and he would maybe a little too greedy off of that. Stargazers, though, is a map that is also fairly short, natural to natural, low ground natural to low ground natural. But you have this kind of free third that's a little easier and there's a ramp outside your natural. It's not right outside the natural, but it's close enough where it is. It's a lot easier to defend on this map and it's a lot easier to see the push coming on this map than it is on moon dance and even then the rush distance is is short but it is longer than what happened on than, than what moon dance has so for now that should work in Jean's favor if he is planning on playing a little bit more of a uh, more of a macro heavy focus and it certainly seems to be the case his third base is on the way he's taking the pocket base as his third and that is really going to be difficult for the zerg to contest unless they opt to go for you know, some sort of all in some sort of nidus play maybe and actually, I have seen some Zerg all-ins where they go and they send eight, eight drones with the all-in to mine out the, the mineral wall and flood in through that direction and just ca absolutely catch the Protoss off guard. But normally, and especially with Oracles on the map, that really shouldn't work. So anyways, for now, Lambo's got his Roach Warren on the way at the save time before 30 Roach Warren. It's, it's a good idea if you don't know what your opponent's going to do. And it's going to be that Charizard Archon style once again coming out from Zhao. Now, last time, he got a pretty quick fourth base once he was scattered out. This time, he has not been scattered out yet. So I think we're going to see him go for the original idea of the build, which is, of course, the Oracle's Dive. And they're going to get a couple workers. The four is going to be nice. And they're going to be able to get out of here without really taking too much damage. Uh, the original build is that 730 timing. Plus one, you have charge. You have a whole bunch of other things. The depths find their way into the mineral line here. Lambo, as clean as his early game was in game one, it is very, very dirty in game number two. Ten workers have fallen. And now Lambo, he's going to be droning hard out of this, but he doesn't have a good idea of what his opponent is doing. And he took a lot of damage there. I need a lurker lurk emote or something. I don't know. I don't, I'm out of, uh, I don't have any more, I don't have any more static emote slots though. It's very sad. Anyway, Lambo. Oh, Lambo's going swarm hosts. Okay. Very cool. He's going to be going uh swarm host here in this game. Number two. And that makes a lot of sense. Given the map, right? You go and there's just so much cliff space, so much areas that swarm hosts can, can fly into and get damage done. But the big news here is Zhaun got the scout. He saw the infestation pit. The question now is whether this makes Lambo change his, his mind. But no, he's just going go to go for it. Four swarm hosts are on the way. Roach speed as well. But it seems like instead of the swarm host harass type of idea, this is going to be swarm hosts full frontal attack. Use the locust to, to buffer for the roaches and the ravagers and, and go from there. 
which is a style it is well swarm hosts are never by are never common but it is eh, it's probably 50 50. of course the big deal on top of this being swarm host play is the fact that there is no nidus nidus network on the way so it's not going to be nidus swarm host again swarm hosts are going to be a fighting unit in this game so Zhao, his response he has archons already but he's building colossus he's chronoing them out and well locusts are light units so that can be a powerful option but really, it feels like what you need is Storm, because if the Locusts get on top of the Colossus, they die anyways. Meanwhile, you can Storm the, uh, you can Storm the Locusts out of the sky. Locusts are gonna, gonna drop on top of this base. Shield Battery is gonna be the first target, and that means that the base is not gonna fall, but Workers are gonna start to go down. Oracles actually do a pretty good job of defending this. Only three Workers have gone down. But now, okay, so here's what Limbo's done, and I don't know whether he's going to continue to do this, but he's got about... 10 12 swarm hosts and he sent six of them. he sent six of them yeah he's gonna stagger them so by staggering the swarm hosts like this he's gonna have very consistent pressure coming out on the map uh onto his opponent's base so this base is gonna go down right now Zhaun has to give this up and his other base is not really in the best position to defend either but it's really hard to push through that position is uh nice oh nice force field Will it call, kill off one of the swarm hosts? And uh, oh, look at this Lambo splits his splits his locust, but he's gonna jump right on top of the army. And with the shield battery and the archons, yeah, they go down very quickly indeed. And the locust on the other side, they're just not doing anything because there's nothing to kill anymore. Hey, 007 Doke, how's it going? Ooh, queens are gonna kill an archon. That's fine. Well, were they? Are they? Nope, they will. But they lose all their lives in the. Uh, in response now the one thing here is uh extend thermal lance is not done so at least there is that but there's a lurker on the way and lurker is very good against this army that joan has been making is he's setting up and lambo he's setting up roaches going for this round trying to take the engage as the locust swarm one colossus falls second one staying alive shield battery repertoire is pretty damn strong the biles will land but at the end of the day it seems like it will only be one colossus that hits the deck and the queen's falling down early means that there's not a lot of anti-air so amber lambo he's got a lurker den just about done adding more hydras here as he finds himself maxed out his hive done as well but what he needs are vipers he needs that ability to reposition the colossus these swarm hosts they have to release their precious payloads right now but so many of them are falling low locusts are gonna jump on top of everything the swarm hosts they gotta run lambo's losing so many of them here but he's chasing oh he's wait he's got one colossus second one is gonna go down disruptor is actually gonna be massive here but it's gonna trade his life in the exchange i think no it's gonna get away and that is such a big deal yes the colossus are dead with the blink stock or plus two they're doing such a great job and with their stasis traps with the shield batteries locust they don't get a lot done lambo has traded off a significant amount of his supply in this game and john continued to progress forward his fourth base now done or just about he's building probes at a time three of them soon to be four are starting to probe up that fourth base the void ray is still just a powerful deterrent but now we are starting to see lurkers on the way vipers as well plus two is done for lambo as he's getting that lurker range it seems like this game may just go a little bit longer now. As this is going to be a damn difficult position for Xiao to break. And Lambo, because he did not take the pocket base earlier, has it pretty accessible to him right now. Now, of course, Disruptors are a pretty decent response to Lurkers. They outrange them. Two Disruptors kill a Lurker, so that can be a way to pick away at an entrenched Zerg position over time. Stalkers blink forward, getting both Vipers. Okay. Yeah, that's a great play for there from the Stalkers. Jean thought he was defended. Oh, no. Oh, no. There was, what was there, like one charge lot there? He triggers off all the Locusts, and they're just not going to get anything done. Lambo, he's up in supply, but remember, that's 18 of that, 20 of that, 20, 21 of that, 24, whatever it is. A lot of that is in swarm hosts, which are just not supply efficient in the extreme, even worse than roaches and ravagers are. So Lambo, he's starting to really uh, hemorrhage momentum in this game. So he's going to try to go for a counterattack. And while it will not be effective because he's not going to get the base, he will find a bunch of the zealots on the bottom side that were getting set up for a counterattack of their own, killing off a couple of them. But it seems like he will just lose these roaches and the ravagers at the end of the day. The entire army 
of Zhaon is going over to defend. But Lambo, he is advancing to his next level of tech. Spire is down. We're probably going to see Broodlords come out of this, but this is not cost effective for Lambo. Once again, yes, he probably wanted to lose these units, but not in that way. Meanwhile, Zealots up run by is on two bases from Lambo, but he had spines on the bottom side, and Zealots are being dealt with by Hydras and Queens on the north side but there we go that's actually a great job the locusts they're going to be able to get right on top of this and there i don't know that there's enough splash yeah shield battery overcharge does go down zone trying to keep the base alive and he just barely does the swarm host dying from earlier making a significant difference but hydras will knock down the shield bat or at least warp prism on the other side but oh man this is such scary for lambo he's got 3,000 minerals but only 150 supply and he's lacking in gas so he's got more hydras on the way the, lur the lurkers they have burrowed, but we're now going to start to see these disruptors start to pick away. Luckily, though, Vipers have been added to the fray once again. So the disruptors, not nearly as powerful as they once were. And if the Viper's positioning is good, they will be defended by the Lurgus here. Good abduct there on a Viper. It will fall, but the Queens continue to fall as well. And that means less creep spread. That means less anti-air. Although, realistically, anti-air are Hydras at this point, but still. Less utility on the map. And Lambo just he needs more gas. Really, that is is the biggest of things. Oh no, that uh this is this is the problem for not going swarm host uh swarm host to be totally or uh, night of swarm host to be totally honest. They uh, yeah yes he does want to lose them but he wanted to be able to get them on top of a base. You can't really swarm host are slow. They die very quickly. They don't defend. They have no real way to defend themselves. So Lambo didn't get a lot out of that. Yes, the heck muffins did in fact pop Emperor Fubles. This is so this is actually a ludicrous amount of lurkers. And this is a, something where the lurkers they get on top of things before the carriers come out in earnest. It could be great, but carriers are already out. Lambo has like 25 lurkers. Uh so the ground army can't fight. The air army absolutely can, though. Abducts, though. Abducts. Good feedbacks. But the lurkers, they burn on top. One shot goes off. But you need more than one to make that happen. Even still, there's detection here. The carriers are doing so much. So the lurkers, they're going to set themselves up for maybe a bit better of a concave. But, folks, there's just no anti air. Nothing deals with the carriers in the sky. Lambo thought he had an opportunity, but he overcommitted to the lurker tech in the extreme. And zealous, they find their way into the main base once again as the hydras try to kite. So now we do have Cryptors on the way, but uh, man, imagine if that push had happened with those Cryptors done. Maybe that would have made something happen, but uh, as it stands, Lambo is kind of felt a, felt like he was a day late and a dollar short. And remember, folks, we are getting... Uh, this is not live. This, this was played this morning. Not Pashka TLT. Much like every WTL game, I... The... I am live. But the games were played this morning. I'm casting off of a YouTube clean feed VOD. Uh, because I don't want to get up early enough to, to do it. And I know there are plenty of you that will not be able to watch it live. So we do it on a time that is a bit more accessible for the North American audience. So... Zealots will go and they will be able to cancel this base and oh drone stays alive at the very least but now Lambo he is pretty much taken every base on his side of the map a little slow actually I thought he'd retaken the base on the north side but apparently not um there, there we go so he is effectively taken every base on his side of the map so to a Zhaun but remember that's not a lot of bases it's only six so it really will all start to come down to this gold base on the bottom side. And the other thing to remember as we talk about Zerg versus Protoss in the late game, in the ultra late game, generally the Zerg does not trade as cost effectively as the Protoss does. So they do kind of want to stay a base up. That, that, that rule can relax a little bit uh, when we talk about this ultra late game Broodlord spellcaster army that Cyril employs to such great effect. But a Lambo's not at that army composition yet, and that is not what I would consider his strong suit. You know, he's good at many things, but uh, he, it's not quite as good for the late game control as, well, as they Cyril is, for example. But for now, this is a scary position on the high ground. It doesn't cut all of it off, but those zealots, they're going to evaporate. 
and the slow siege of Lambo does continue. But remember, Lambo, uh, he has been revelated. It's going to wear off fairly soon. And the question, though, I don't think we have any more oracles on the field. Like, that is the really big deal. Vipers will find themselves fed back, and that's obnoxious. The carriers, you don't want to fight into them. You want to abduct them. You can't pick them off one by one but oracle feedback plus the detection is rather nice indeed no zealots are going to try to find their way into this bottom side base there are so many spines and the bottom side base from Zhang will go down so lambo he is securing some economic lead right he took the bottom base he has all six bases of his own so as long as he can keep denying that bottom base or even just get take that up position that he has by denying the bottom side denying Zhang the control of that section of the map if he can leverage that into the gold it's gonna be pretty nice for him Actually, that may be a bit of a weak point for Lambo uh, in the pocket fourth because there are only two spines there. And that's, well, two spines do not kill all the zealots, but they're going to be shifted into the main base where lurkers will chase them down. So I don't think this is going to get that much done, but it, hmm, we're going to have to see what this pressure uh, gets done here because down is maxed out. He's got plus two range or he plus two air attack. He's got a ton of carriers. His army is cloaked. There are not a lot of spores here, a lot of spines, but also not in this position, but the spore count is rather low so detection will be a problem and the vipers they gotta they need to get, okay storm actually on the of uh, uh, the overseer Le, uh Jean realizes just how important that unit is but more overseers are gonna get made so that's really not gonna matter all that much and Jean knocks some crew spread down that seems like that'll be it for the most part It is really interesting to see this lurker corruptor viper style normally you'll see not this uh as the bottom base will get dealt with uh Jiang is able to re a retake position on the bottom side and deny the gold base from lambo now when we talk about late game compositions normally we're talking about vipers and brood lords and infestors for the most part there's good abducts there on a bunch of vipers or on a on a bunch of archons but the benefit that this army has well maybe not be quite as powerful and control quite as much space in the late game uh, the big benefit of it is the fact that it is much more mobile it can respawn it can be actually active on the map in a way that broodlords cannot for the most part this concave is, is actually terrifying yes the detection or the, yes the mothership does cloak but there are a spot or there are spores there and it's really hard to attack into this Lambo has been able to rebuild his bank for the most part. 3,000 gas, 4,500 minerals, 5,000 minerals. It's not the biggest bank, but it's not bad. Now, here comes the fight on the bottom side. We talked about how maneuverable this position is. Well, the lurkers are still a little slow to the fray, and while void rays are knocking down all the spores, and storm gets dropped on the burrowed lurkers on the north side. So it feels like Lambo is just going to have to give this base up. Another storm lands, but it's not actually going to get all that much done. Good feedback, though. The base does fall, and Lambo, well, he's just a little supply block recalling out. Jean eats himself out of there. He gets a base, gets a lot of, gets a ton of spines, and supply blocks Lambo in the in the process. Ah, I wouldn't say Bane's have death death touch Cyber John. Bane's explode on many things, and they don't kill them. Uh, it takes six Bane's to kill a uh, to kill a ghost, for example. It's a good question, 1832. Really, whoever gets the, the bottom, whoever gets the six o'clock base probably wins the game. Yeah, but uh, people don't think Archons are Imba, and Ghosts are, in fact, Imba. So, um, we're going to rail against how many Banes it takes to kill a Ghost, damn it. <laughs> uh, but anyways. Lambo now finally transitioning into truly late game fashion. He has a bunch of brood lords. He's actually kind of giving these lurkers up. Yeah, they're expensive, but he needs room for more brood lords. So he's giving those, uh, he's giving the lurkers away. We'll lose another two of the disruptors. And again, while he wants to give them away, he doesn't want to give them away in that manner. He wants to be able to trade them cost effectively in some way. And while he's traded this away, he just spent his entire gas bank on infestors and brood lords so yes this is a more powerful army but lambo doesn't really have the ability to resupply all that well 
He's lost the bottom right base, lost the gas mining there. He's mining 400 less gas a minute. And the army of Xiaon is just a little bit more maneuverable at the moment. I have so much damage, but oh, nice. Abdu oh, he doesn't do it. There we go. That They're onto the low ground. Abducted now. They're dead. Um, the Vipers tried to go and abduct over the cliff, but they had to spend two to do that. Not the biggest of deals, but still not exactly what Lambo was looking for is now. War Prison Speed just about done. Tempest upgrades. Tectonic destabilized on the way, but no Tempest on the map just yet. And Broodlords are so damn slow that they just can't do the map rotations that Lurkers can. So they're going to they're gonna show up here, but the army's already on top of them. Big abduct there on the Mothership will knock it all down. But, well, there's detection, so Mothership does have to fall. Parasite Bomb has been dropped here. Looking for the Loco Maneuver, maybe, but there are still so many Interceptors. And Lambo has lost this entire army. The Carriers, they stand strong. But the Corruptors, actually, they're starting to knock everything down as well. So I was mistaken. Just enough damage done that oh, so many Carriers will fall. Lurkers stay alive. Broodlord stay alive. But the big deal. Lambo has no gas. He's lost 15 drones on the backside. Zhaon has no gas either, but he was able to resupply more. And I didn't really notice this, but Lambo's only on 32 workers. It's up to 35 now. Zhaon is on a healthy economy. Lambo just, he isn't. And he's going to blink down to the bottom side, try to knock something down. But it's the lurkers burrow. Uh, these are going to be, oh, the, what? Look at them evaporate. Plus three lurkers. Bonus damage to armor. Stalkers, they're armored. They explode. Uh, Broodlord transition was not incorrect, Pashka, but the Spore Forest was lacking. Is really the big deal there. Now Zealous, well, we can talk about Broodlord transition being incorrect all we want. There's going to be no opportunity to build Broodlords for just a little bit longer because, well, the Greater Spire is done. But now Lings are going to find a ton of these probes. They try to take the gold base. So that's not going to really happen. Lurkers, though, they have to run away. Lambo can no longer afford to give them away. His economy, his army is really too shattered. And the Zealous, they have yet to be dealt with. They're still here, shelling away at, or clawing away, swiping away at the, well, at the Spire, but that will be knocked down eventually. The Zealots are dead, but still the Greater Spire going down is a problem. Three Broodlords are not, a, three Broodlords don't do anything. Thank you, HDXTV. And it's such a shame about the Spore Forest too, because Lambo A had those Spine Forest out his outlying bases, which are what you want to defend against those run buys. But there were points when he had significant mineral banks. And uh, building a mass, I mean, building a Spore Forest is expensive, but it's not as expensive as a Spine Forest. And he had the money for it at points. Right? I mean, that's what I do this. I, I also, granted, it, WTL starts at six in the morning for me, seven in the morning. Um, but I'd much rather cast it at night. And uh, also, it, it works out on on multiple fronts because it means that I don't have to compete with Steadfast and Wardy. People for, see, get to see it for different time zones, and I don't have to wake up stupid early. So I consider it a win on all fronts. As now, Zelts are really starting to get a lot of damage here. Because Lambo, A, he moved to a Broodlord army, which is much more static. Uh, he has the Lurker still because he just had to build something. And he's just kind of getting torn apart. It seems like Lambo is a little less comfortable in the late game than some of his European Zurich brethren. But okay, the Mothership will go down. Parasitic Bomb there on top of the Void Ray. Storm gets dropped here. Corruptors just trying to avoid it. But the Archon beneath makes it so hard. They're, they're melting. Corruptors, they're all falling down. And they got to run away here. Corruptors, carriers, excuse me, are still alive. And the Interceptors are still there. Lambo runs out of an economy. It runs out of an army as well. And Joan ties it up. Shows some of the power and the glory that he used to take a map off Cyril in Atlanta. In the upper right, folks, on Data C, on the biggest map of the pool, he is for the Rebellion, the online warrior. It's Bjorn. And on the bottom left, in the red, he is the GSL finalist of Season 3 for Alpha X, Ragnarok. And yeah, that is true, 1832. Um, Bion is, per Aligulak, I think the third best player in the world at the moment. There we go, now it's back. 
uh, is the third best player in the world at the moment, which is interesting because he never, he really has not been performing in online play. He had a decent run. I never four, excuse me. Um, but no, okay. He, when I was the previous week, he was number three, but Hero has leapfrogged him a little bit. And how great does it feel that when we look at the top three players in the world, it is Cyril, Maru, and Hero. Right? One, one Zerg, one Protoss, one Darren. And then Beyond, Rainer, Clem, Dark, Max Pax at number eight. Only two Protoss in the top ten, though. We can describe a lot of that to who is in the military right now and um, some steps back. Although Showtime is, is starting to look better and better, but he doesn't play a lot online, so it's hard for him to get uh, on Illegal Axe ratings because you just he just doesn't have the data points. Oh, you know what? We need to talk about the game. I'm sorry. Ragnarok is proxying like that, and uh, I, I assume it's high ground tank range, uh, HTXTV. Um, because you're right, that is a little bit off center. Bunker goes down though before the creep goes out. And Beyond, by the way, is opening three racks here. That's going to be his response at the very least. So Lings, as they pop up, they're going to find a lot of Marines in their face. Can Ragnarok deny this base? Looks like that answer is going to be no. But what a weird game from Ragnarok. Uh, proxy hatch? I mean, this is just to deny the natural. Uh, he gets a couple lings out, but notice... Well, oh, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, he's going to build a queen here, but that's because he really just wants to get creep tumors elsewhere. But in the absence of gas... Yes, we have gas being made, but it's, it's not going to be for roaches. It's not going to be for speed. This is not, I don't think, going to be too committed. But as I say that, Ragnarok is building a bunch more lings, and the queen does get the creep tumor, which right, is the most important thing. And more marines are going to get made here. But here come the Lings trying to flood forward. Beyond caught off guard. Not expecting Ragnarok to commit to this as much as he has. But the micro uh, the micro against these Lings is really sparkling. It's effervescent. And the Lings, yes, they will kill all the marines. But only four SCVs have gone down. All the Lings are dead. And the bunker still stands. Marines are coming into it quickly and quickly and quickly. The base will fall. And that was not cost effective for Ragnarok in the extreme. He committed so much larva to this. But he will have at least... Two I think that mm, that's one scan. Ragnarok has not quite been able to find the position that allows him to go and do force two scans out of the Terran. So at the very least, there is that. But as I say that, no, I think the Queen found a position on the left side. There we go. That is the creep tumor that forces his second scan. It's going to be so obnoxious. Queen will fall. One creep tumor goes down as well. Oh no, beyond. Oh no! Oh oh oh! Wow! That does for that. That is all caught in one scan. Unfortunate in, in the extreme for Ragnarok, but beyond. Oh man, everything's going so well for him right now. He punishes. He punishes the proxy from Ragnarok. He does not have to cancel his natural. He was building it on the high ground anyways. He has three racks behind the stim on the way. The lings all fell, and it only cost him one scan, one well placed scan to knock down every single creep tumor. And thank you for the follow, HTX TV. That was honestly, that was such a disgusting scan. I, I know that that's, it, it feels like a weird thing to talk about. Oh man, that's not a ton of micro. That was a disgusting scan. That was, Ragnarok was tr trying to force two. Right? He, he wanted, because that's a lot of money. That's effectively like 450 minerals worth of scans if you force two scans. And it's another way to punish the, the Terran and it slows down the retake of the natural. But, and getting it one, it effectively it gives him five, four or five SCVs worth of money. Just right there. But for now, Ragnarok does have a Banely Nest on the way, building more and more Lings because he understands that this pressure from Byun can be scary. Stim is just about done. It was a 3 racks. Ragnarok well aware of this fact. But Byun, I think, starting to realize that why does he need to go do crazy things? Although, okay, these Marines are going to get caught out here and Stim is not yet done, but they're going to find their way into a corner. Trying to take the best possible fight that they can, but best possible fight is still a losing one. So they will fall, but a bunch of Merlings will fall as well. And Beyond has a bunker in the wall. He's got a second bunker behind the wall. The wall, that is the scary thing because Banelings are now going to get more after Ragnarok. He's going all in as all in as all ins can be. And folks, there are no tanks. There are no Widow Mines. There is no splash damage. 
in this game. So it's all going to be on Beyond's Micro, on his pulls, how many Banelings fall. And remember, there's a second Malgrass. Steve is going to get pulled to try to keep this one alive, but they got to be so careful because there are more Banelings here. Good target fire, actually, from Gun. He gets every single damn one, and the Marines survive on the high ground. Lings, they can't do anything anymore. There's a bunker here. They got to run away. And Bjorn, my God, that's actually disgusting. He gets every single Baneling on the high ground that's trying to get something done. He doesn't even lose the Supply Depot. He's not... He's the Supply Blocked a little bit. And Ragnarok, he's got that cheeky grin on because he knows Bjorn just did something marvelous. And now Ragnarok, he's got to go find something else. Lair on the way. Evo Chamber's going down. But when you try two all-ins against Bjorn and you don't get the damage that you need, well, you consider yourself pretty far behind. And Mr. Shift, thanks so much for the follow as well. Uh, how does Rag know a three max is coming? Well, because, or how does Ragnarok know there's a three max is uh, coming? Because he got Lings onto the high ground during his proxy. And he saw the two barracks done and the third one finishing. So now, now the three max, well, now the Stim Marines, the plus one Marines, the combat shield Marines are on the map. Two medevacs, keeping them alive. And Ragnarok, you know he droned up out of that. Right, he has to build his money back. So Beyond has a feels like he's gonna have a pretty useful opportunity, a pretty nice timing where these 16 Marines may be able to inflict a lot of damage on the map. But there are a decent amount of bane, so Beyond he's gonna well, target what he can and get the hell out of dodge, not getting the damage he wants off that drop. But hey, there's the tank position. Well, the position that used to accept tanks before that got patched. This annoying as hell position on the high ground that allows the Marines to A, they're gonna kill some gas, but there's a way to defend now. Bion can defend his Marines with Marines that are pretty much untouchable by anything else. So a couple workers will fall. Bion picks up, drops down, back onto the low ground. Maybe going to get a queen. Maybe going to get more drones. And Ragnarok is not going to be able to deal with this for quite a while. Bion has to... Um, he's just... Okay, that's unfortunate. He was uh, waiting for the last second pickup when all the Lings were dead. But uh, he, he waited a little too long. That was a lot of Marines falling. But even still. Bion how... It... He's got his third base just about done. It's, it's not on location, but he's got triple orbital building medevacs two at a time. He's denying about half of the mining on the fourth base of Ragnarok. And Ragnarok very quickly has gone from a decent three base mining, 62 odd workers, down to below that pretty significantly. And as the tank siege appear on the right side, this is a scary position for Ragnar to try to defend. But Bion does not have the other side of it, so this is a little bit more doable. Good, tar good target fire from the tanks. And Bion's going to save both tanks because he is just that good. And now dropping on the other side, one Ling is going to try to do something. But really, it's just a scouting Ling. The Queen has gone down. Ragnarok is not allowed to mine from his third base. And fourth base is under significant threat. So Ragnarok turning his tech around. He's got a Roach Warren now, but I I think Bion just has this. This is just... Oh, nice. Oh, well, that, that was a nice nice handle there from Ragnarok. Knocked down, knocks down two tanks, and at least that means that uh, the pressure coming in from beyond on the bottom side is going to be less powerful. Now, okay, bio stimming. This is a very low hatch here. Ling's looking for the surround. Bion, he's not going to get quite in range, but he is fighting tremendously well, right? It's 1 1 versus only plus 1 carapace. And the Ravagers are being made to try to deal with the pressure coming in from Bion. Biles are going to get dropped, and the surrounds are nice. The Ravagers will knock down the Liberators, but this is going to be a dead third base very quickly here for Ragnarok. There we go. The bio kills the rest of it. Broodlings, they're not even going to get their revenge. And Liberator CG. And Bion is just everywhere. The fact that Ragnarok is still above 100 supply, although not for that much longer, is kind of miraculous considering how badly this game is going for him. But even still. He's lost his third base. He wasn't mining from it for the majority of the game anyways. He's about to lose his fourth, I think. He's lost all mining in the main base, at least briefly he did. He's only on 47 workers. He's down upgrades. He's or he's down war army supply. He's down upgrades. He's down pretty much everything in the game. The fact that he's hanging on at all is, is insane. But yeah, HTHTXTV. I don't think I've ever heard 
first of all, I'm not sure, not sure what you're saying the Dram refers to. I mean, yes, Dram hack instead of Dream hack from MMA's trophy, but in this game. And I don't think I've ever heard uh, the Dram um, used for anything. But it is very possible that I operate in, in different, in different StarCraft circles than you do. And now, double drop on the main base once again. Byun really just... Byun is in such a winning position in this game, but he's just trying to find a way to actually close the set out. Ah, fair enough, uh, HDX TV. Good old west coast of Canada. Vancouver. But also 1832, it's not really fair to say that Ragnarok is not looking like the higher rated player because he he went for an all-in that didn't work. You know, the fact that he's in this game at all is impressive. Um, but you can't say, wow, you know, he's getting smashed here. Clearly, he's just miles worse. It's like, well, no, he went for a proxy hatch and tried to catch Bjorn off guard and almost did. Uh, that almost ended the game right there. Or at least got game, game defining damage, but he didn't have quite have his creep tumors where they needed to be. I wasn't able to quite find that position and Bjorn's a skin was absolutely brutal. And then the bailing pressure, well, Bjorn target fired the bailings in a way that most Terrans would not do. So the bailing bus didn't get anything done. It's like, well, Ragnarok, you all in twice. You're very far behind. You just got to try to hope your opponent runs into your banes. Yeah, it really is Emperor Fubles. Although I wouldn't argue that Ragnarok is alive. I would just argue that he's not dead yet. Uh, because there, here comes the pressure of Beyond and Ernest. This is a big army. Ling's engaging before the Banelings are. Tank target fire kills the rest of the Banes. And yes, some Marines have fallen, but far more Lings, far more Banelings, far more Roaches, and Barat, far more Ravagers are going six feet under. Bion secures his victory 13 minutes in. In the upper left, hop off, hot off an incredible hole in game at number one. He is for the Rebellion. It's Bion. And of course, his opponent on the bottom right trying to equalize once again. Send it all, put it all on the shoulders of Estrella. It is Ragnarok. And ooh, we got a very early bit of something coming in from Ragnarok here. What was this? 15, four, uh, 14, 13 gas pool? 13, 12 gas pool? Ragnarok is going aggro as all hell. In this game number one and beyond's gone cc first this is this has the chance to be an utter disaster for beyond he's gonna have to deal with probably roaches All right this is gonna be uh i think we're gonna see roach warren dropped at about 19 drones maybe but for now he's building lings there is oh okay so it's gonna be speed link timing interesting and beyond is of course going double gas to make up for this he's got his barracks on the way now and Ragnarok takes a natural. Huh. Very interesting here. Uh, I'm not totally sure what Ragnarok is. I mean, I, yes, he's going to build a couple links to cancel the command center. But unfortunately, now that we look at this, it's like, okay, so if this was more all in, if this was a roach timing or something, this would be a disaster for Bjorn. But because it's CC first against just Lings across the map, well, the Lings that are meant to cancel the command center are going to find a completed command center. The wall on the high ground will be done. There's nothing that takes advantage of the fact that Pion just does not have a lot of army. Because again, I mean, Lings aren't going to kill a... They don't, they don't kill an orbital. So there was an opportunity. Again, this was, if this was the Roach build, I was the Roach Ravager build I was thinking of, that this was going to be a disaster for Pion. But instead... He got, he's gotten away with being greedy. He has double barracks on the map here. It's a 2-1-1. And the Lings, they're going to flood in to find a natural that... I mean, they're going to kill some SCVs, probably. But Bion's already double orbital. There's only one SCV on the low ground. Bion drops the wall. There we go. And what are you going to get here? What is Ragnarok going to get? He's going to try to kill the supply depot. He's not going to get the barracks. They got a thousand mineral... They got a thousand HP each. Marines are now starting to pop out here. And that feels like that shouldn't be a... It should be a gap, but it's not. Ragnarok again, kind of rolling the dice here on its openers, and Bjorn is just hard, hard, hard counter again. Look at this two-round wall. Yeah, some sort of counter-up follow-up bane bust. 
is just not going to work. There is a wall, then there is a gap, then there is another wall. The command center is sitting there, the orbital. I, yeah, that, that is a death zone. That There is zero chance that Ragnarok is going to be able to break through. So every time he shows up, just loses another ling. And I mean, you got to admire the SimCity of Beyond. That is beautiful hot. Um, that is beautiful uh, hot walling. Hey, Sasha. How do you feel about the allegations that um, <laughs> the Zerg Cabal is working together to just make the most imbalanced patch possible? <laughs> but um, yeah, you normally make eight lings when it's pull first. I don't think I have. I don't. I don't really see all that off in this the gas in it, the gas pool uh, against Terran. So, but I, I will defer to your wisdom on this. Anyway, Ragnarok does have his uh, third base on the way right now. Our third base done, so he's drawing up more and more. Three queens are on the way behind this, but because that he did, right, this was gas pool hatch. Uh, he does have everything is delayed a little bit. His worker count not as powerful as it might be if this was uh, your standard build. Uh, he has four queens at the front, and they're finishing up, so he should be up to seven pretty soon. But really, the big deal again, right? He just he's, his link count has been diminished slightly. I don't know how many he has, but he's building more. But as he's doing that, he's doing this off 42 workers. So this 2 on one coming in from Yun that really has not taken too much damage uh, is going to be more potentially powerful, at the very least by forcing Ling's... <laughs> it's an old build, but it doesn't check out. Yeah, that's fair. Um, he's forcing more and more Ling's out off of Ragnarok that is already economically disadvantaged. And Bion going the Maru version of the 2 on one as well, uh, where... He's adding, a, he's adding a Widow Mine, but that's not actually going to get the Burrow that at once. A couple of Marines will fall. And the, in fairness, the Lings of Ragnarok are doing a great job of just shadowing where these, uh, where the, the Medivacs are going. And Ragnarok's buying some time. He's going to have his Bailey Nest down soon enough. Hey, Preacher Essie. Now the biome stems forward here, clearing up as much creep as they can. They can. It is six queens on the front line. Actually, it's seven. So at least Ragnarok does have that defensive play available, available to him. As the Widowmine doesn't really get that much done, but it's only one queen on the main. So yes, Ragnarok is on nine queens, but he's about lost 11 workers. So it's not really great on either side of the coin. Beyond targeting the Baneling Nest down now. No Banelings are even morphing, and Ragnarok loses that most important defensive structure. And Byun gets out just the same way he came in, right as the queens arrive. So now, guess what? Byun finds more value in the third base, stimming right into that one. And this is the type of damage that you cannot let a 2-1-1 get. 15 drones, a dead Bainley Nest as well. And now the Lings, they get the surround, and Byun has to run away. Back up, losing some Marines as they, their health gets low. But... Zerg has, actually, Zerg has less workers than the Terran does. Upgrades, they're delayed. It's only going to be single Evo for the moment for plus one armor. Ragnarok just plain and simply cannot afford the minerals and gas to get plus one attack as well. He's got to get that Baneling Nest again. It means that Baneling Speed is going to be very, very slow. His fourth base only just now completing. I mean, much like last game, it, it's starting to feel like this is a game where Ragnarok just really needs Bion to run into his Bane's face first. If, they, if this game go, goes out or uh, plays out as standard, well, it's going to be damn hard for Ragnarok to make a comeback. I like your Baneling emote, Preacher. Banelings are actually my favorite unit in StarCraft, and I, I know that's a... Uh, I know a lot of people are talking about they don't want to see something like that in Stormgate, but um, this this suicidal anti-micro unit that is, that costs money to use effectively, I don't think it's kind of things kind of cool. Hey, back in Oproto, five months in a row. That's all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. But okay, yeah, I'm clearing up a lot of creep on the right side. Good target. Oh, great target fire there on the Banes. Didn't even see them coming in, hidden behind Ragnarok's face, but. 
Again, targets them all down. Really doesn't lose that many Marines. Gets a couple more creep tumors. Max on up. Now Bion has his 1-1. One, one. Ragnarok was able to scrounge up enough money, get himself up to 70 drones, get his plus one attack on the way. Not too far behind the armor. And Banely's speed is now done. So Ragnarok, he's doing a great job of playing Zombie Zerg. He did this last game too. No, uh, Ragnarok gonna come in here once again. Wind of Mines, they do need to burrow. And Bion loses a decent amount of Marines, but not all that much. And the Marauder is just soaking up so many shots. Wind of Mines don't get much though, so... At the very least, it's starting to get a little bit better trades for Ragnarok. Well, speed are a little harder to run away from, but this drop from earlier finally is going to get dealt with as the Queens come from the top rope and they knock down both medevacs. So Bion, he loses that pressure, but he does start to put... That's actually a lot of damage here with the Marauders arriving as well. Puts a lot of damage on that fourth hatch. And maybe a next round, a return, to, a return from Bion is going to get enough to, uh, to knock that one down. So Ragnarok's going to have to be very careful about where he chooses to, def to defend from for the next couple minutes as the hatchery starts to regen. And that becomes even more complicated because Ragnarok is taking the upper right as well as his fifth. Kind of where you have to, but it means that Ragnarok has to defend two very different places from the multi-pronging, the just unfettered aggression that Bion does provide. But okay, now Lings are going to look for this round, and uh, Wind of Mine Bait is actually really nice. It does mean that Ragnarok doesn't take all that much, and Beyond is going to be forced to give this position up, but it's just a fake, and that Wind of Mine got so many Banes. Beyond's going to get the base as well on the bottom side. It's going to be transfused, but there's just not enough, so the base has fallen. Beyond the triple drop there, finally finding the value that it is looking for. Meanwhile, again, those Wind of Mines on the north, north side, it killed so many Banes, and Beyond target firing. Oh, he's getting them all, but okay, last second does get a good connection, and Beyond... He loses a medevac, but it didn't really have much in it. Much in it. So beyond, beyond's target fire on these banes is, is kind of ridiculous. We saw in game one. We're seeing it in game two here, but it's, today's a good beyond day. Today is a beyonderful day. Uh, I, I don't think beyond has streamed recently back in Uproto. I know Mario streamed once. I think beyond was. I think beyond appeared on that stream. Yeah, I was just really sad to see Bion get knocked out in the round of 12 at Atlanta, considering how powerful he's been online. Next push from Bion coming in on the right side, though. He already got the bottom. He already got the fourth base. Now he's going to get the other one. The Marauders serving as a wall. The Banelings do not get the connections they want. And once again, Bion kites backward. But now the Banelings are mostly gone. So he moves forward. Tank stitches up on the high ground. Not a lot of Banelings remain. And the target fire... Uh, it's actually not going to be as incredible as it might otherwise be. Beyond focused elsewhere. Knocks down the potential fifth base. And a tank will fall. Parts and bits and bobs of Beyond's army will start to go down. But now he's on top of the queens. And transfuse as you like. This is 2-2 bio. It's really hard to transfuse properly. And even still, though, with a flank from the left side, the tank will be dealt with. And Ragnarok will force Beyond back off that position. But Ragnarok, he's... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Beyond is not going to be able to deny plus two armor. So that is going to be a win as much as a win can be considered for for Ragnarok. And Ragnarok does have Lurkers on the way, but he has Lurkers on the way and the Hive is not anywhere near completion. So these Lurkers, they will not have Seismic Spines. They will not have Fast Burrow. So they're just not really as powerful. These, these are Lurkers that can just get stimmed upon and get killed if the Lings do not serve as a bit of a wall. And even still, they don't have upgrades. So the Lurkers are not doing the damage that they need. And it doesn't matter because Bjorn, he kites on the north side. The Lurkers are going to get one of them will get targeted down. Bainley's trying to get connections that they need. And at the end of the day, they're going to get decent ones. And again, Bjorn forced backwards for the moment, but he just gets that next round of reinforcements and more Lurkers are joining the fray, of course. But Widomine is going to burrow off. Lur uh, Lurkers will now get scanned off. They will go down. And the Marines, well, they stand the test of time. The Lings do not. The Lurker Cocoons are found. And G to double G, Ragnarok does fall. Bion secures a significant advantage for the Shopify Rebellion here after a second set. Ragnarok, he falls, loses two. And Hearthstone now only needs one map to secure Shopify of the week and tie them for third place. In the bottom right, folks, he is the captain, the admiral of this fleet for the rebellion. It's Harstim. And in the upper left, in the red, folks, he is for Alpha X, their savior, Max Angel Astrea.
Yeah, HTX TV. I asked when the season was announced, but uh, guest had already been determined uh, for the season. Look, 1832. <laughs> I am an American. I play on NA, and um, yes, NA, NA ladder should absolutely be bullied. NA rank should absolutely be bullied. It is, uh, it, it, it is unredeemable <laughs> at this point. <laughs> Even on the PTR, I was playing. I was trying to test out changes on the PTR yesterday, and first of all, it was like only ZBZ, which kind of sucked. Um, but also, I was getting like two base storm host nitus. Nothing about Stormhost and Nidus were changed. Like, why? You can do that on ranked. But anyway. PvP. It's cosmic. There is no low ground ramp. So it's going to be two gate expand from both players. At least two gate opener from both players. Whether it is an expand or not, we're going to have to see. But of course, also the question, uh, Harstam. He recently got engaged. So congratulations to him. He is proxying a Stargate on the bottom left side. Uh, but recently, Harstam got engaged. And he bought a new house as well. He's moved into it. So he's got new house buff and fiance buff. And that means that that should overpower Max's... Uh, Max Angel's just dirty, dirty Protoss play. No, no, no. You, you, got, you don't understand Emperor Fubal. The wife buff is real. Hero, he won GSL Season 2, and in his interview, he's talking about how he's so motivated to win more tournaments so his wife wouldn't cry, and she would just find it normal and blasé. Uh, Solar, though, had the wife buff. He gets married. He starts to play a lot better. The relationship buff, or the, the engagement buff, the marriage buff, whatever you want to call, uh, call it, is absolutely real. Or something like that. Anyways, Nash are going down from both sides, but Harstam does have Oracles on the way. Let's see if he can force Astraea out of range. Because that's the big deal. Right now, Astraea only has one Mineral Line that he needs to defend. If he's just going to keep a couple Stalkers in the Mineral Line, that's not really going to be all that much. And Harstam's actually lost a couple probes to the Adept. Just probes rallying back and forth. One probe kind of near the, the Shield Battery. But the fact that Astraea is committing so hard to knocking the Shield Battery down or forcing it to be there... Almost makes you think this is a Stargate play. Because one of the the big brain plays is uh, Harstam does not cancel that. That's going to be obnoxious. He's going to have to kill off a shield battery. Uh, one of the big brain plays you can do, though, and this is something that Hero does a lot, for example, uh, is you, you kind of keep the Adepts on the shield battery. And the Stalkers, they go down to the low ground, of course, to defend that. And then you flood it. You fly Oracles into the main base. Which then, of course, does nice body blocking there from Harston. Means he's not going to lose a single worker to the Adept. Well played. It then means the Stalkers are out of the base and Oracle flies into the main and it gets a lot of damage done. But that is not, uh, in fact, what Astraea was going for. Now, uh, Astraea, his blink is going to complete right around the same time that the Twilight is done for Harston. So that is the damage potential. And this proxy Oracle has got nothing done. I mean, it's got some scouting, it's got some revelation, but I don't really think any workers have died. And even with, even with double Oracle play, which means shield batteries by themselves, they don't do anything, but stalkers are where they need to be. And certainly for a Hearthstone, this does represent threat for the majority of the rest of the game. And oh, there we go. That's the damage he's looking for. Finds the natural. Stalkers blink on top, but it's only two of them, so the Oracle will stay alive, although it does take heavy damage. And there we go. That's the damage that Hearthstone wants. He, got, he gets four workers, puts himself up about three. And by keeping these oracles here, it kind of forces Astraea to be less active on the map than he might like to be. With Blink being done and having that significant lead, well, he knows the moment he runs out with Stalkers on the map, Harston is going to dive in and drop Stasis Traps or just turn on the Pulsar Cannon and, and kill off a lot of workers. So he does have to keep Stalkers at home, and this buys Harston time to get to the next level of his tech before Astraea really truly engages. Oracles dive in. A couple more workers fall, but Harstam actually, he's got stalkers. He's got an infestation of stalkers in the main base. He's not gonna get a he's not gonna get a single one of these as they recall out. Nice job there, Astraea. He now finds himself up about three workers. We talked about Astraea's dirty, dirty Protoss play, and there we go. 
absolutely filthy. Rolling in the muck. Although, actually, the five-star great squad in the main base is not really all that filthy. <laughs> all things considered. Well, see, the benefit of Emperor Fubal, if playing video games is your job, or talking about video games is your job, then you're less likely to get yelled about at about as Stargard Blink Forward. And because Harstam led with the wound or with the full health Oracle, both stay alive. And now Harstam, his third base, a little bit behind Astraeus. Astraeus is done. Three probes at a time. Harstam is not. So that worker lead will start to expand by about a probe, probably. Maybe two. But Arstam, well, he has his Dark Shrine on the way. His upgrades are actually much, much faster here. Am I hiring? No, I'm proof -able. <laughs> I do not make enough to be doing this for a living. I do this for a hobby that kind of pays my rent sometimes. Um, but I, but it makes just enough money that if when I'm uh, hanging out with Claire, she, she understands. She's not too upset about me dedicating time to it. Hey, you shot your shot. But the next position we're really looking at, as now we are on three bases, Harstam actually taking his fourth base pretty quickly here, uh, is when the Dark Shrines, or uh, is when the Dark Shrine will complete, when charge is done, when plus one is done, and Harstam's going to try to start to put a lot of chaos on the map. DT is in several bases as he puts pressure with the Blink Stalkers with plus one at the front. If something's getting recalled, okay, the orb. Harstam got tired of having them behind the mineral line, and one of them, I assume, for stasis traps all around the map. Maybe some revelations as well. But at the very least, he doesn't really have to worry about them behind the mineral line. But there we go. DTs are warping in, but I believe they're warping in at home. So it's going to take a little while for them to wind their way onto the other side of the map. Something just died. Is that a DT? I don't see any detection. I guess not. Okay, there's the DT from Harstim. He's going to try to find his way into the natural here. Does Astraea see it? Oh, great body block there. Blinks right on top of it. Now the DT will not fall, but force fields dropped as well. Here comes the observer. So Harstim gets nothing done with that. Well, uh, the problem is, Marty V. Buren, outside, uh, unlike, say, the, the, the union that is being formed at Dartmouth and... Um, we're going to see what happens with that. Um, if I, if I strike from streaming, I make less money. <laughs> if I don't stream for a week, less people sub, less people watch. I get less ad revenue. It's the opposite of something that I can do that is effective. Is now Harstim, he gets a, he gets a, a cannon, but he's got a backup, go somewhere else. That body block. Yeah, it was sick and refuble. And now Stalker blinks forward, and with the Observer here, the Stasis Trap will not be all that powerful, but it is something that Astraea does have to be aware of. And actually, Observer just goes down. Oh, no, no, no. My, my grad my my grad work pays me, pays the bills. I was saying, like, the, the video game stuff pays enough to, pays enough to cover the rent sometimes. But JT Piggy Bucks, thanks so much for the follow, is, uh, the zealots with charge, they find their way in, kill off a couple workers. Got a morphing pile on, I think that was. And Estrella has now forced us, kicking and screaming, forced Harstam kicking and screaming, into the game state where he is probably favored in the late game. That is where he, that's where he's made his millions. But Harstam has entered the late game from a significant lead. He's up a base. He's actually taking the rich gas base, which is really interesting, but makes sense as we talk about PVZ late, or PVP late game. And he's the one that's been getting more damage done. But now now DT's main arted in. DT's blinking into the third base as well. But that's not going to get nearly as much done. Stalker's warp in as well. And Lower Prism is going to get forced out here for the moment. But there's no detection in the main. One DT dropped off. And Harstim, he's got to deal with this. But he's not dealing with it just yet. Oracle arrives. Drops the revelation. 12 workers have fallen. But luckily, at least he's on five. He's on five Nexus. So we can rebuild that one pretty quickly. Ah, uh, thank you, HDXTV. Um, I mean, I am a, I am a hobbit after all. I, I am Frodo. Now, 
Force Dogs blink forward here, trying to get on top of what they can. The Zealots are a little bit slow to engage, and the Force Fields are actually going to be really nice here, forcing the disengage from Astraea, because if the Zealots get the engagement that they're looking for, especially with Harston being up upgrades, well, it's going to be pretty great for them. But the Stalkers now, they're fighting with no Zealot support, and the Force Fields continue to be really nice, but now they're getting on top of them. DT in the main. There's no detection there. Where are the Oracles? Harston needs to deputize some level of detection and deal with the Invisible Man. But for right now... He's not really been able to do so. But there's a cannon. Okay, there we go. Dragged it into it. And that's what you're looking for now. Harstum, he's up 30 supply. He's up an upgrade for another 12 seconds. And will then be up plus three for quite a while. Knocking down the, the space that Astray has on the map. But Astray, though, he's got his gold base on the way. Whether this will be something that he's allowed to keep, though, that's a different story. As another observer does fall. And it's interesting. Harston is playing a lot of focus on the observers, as one should. A vision is arguably the most important component of, of PvP, but he's doing this. He's not doing anything that takes advantage of it. He's not using DTs in the army. He's not moving into disruptor play. It's just charge lot, blink stalker against charge lot, blink stalker. Couple DTs here and there for harassment. But that is just about it. Oh, that's a lot of stalkers, a lot of zealots uh, that are going to find their way on the north side. Meanwhile, Harston has enough of an army supply that he can take the fight really on two fronts. But here comes Astraea through the middle of the map, owning that position, trying to get a bit of a surround. But Harstum seems to be the one that will be surrounding here. Harstum tries to take the fight on the right side. There's no detection. The DT's going to start to shred. Now Stark's playing on the left side. Massive concave, massive surround coming in from the captain himself. And Astraea is losing so many of these zealots. But he doesn't lost too many stalkers. Not just yet the true beef of this army. But he is going to start to lose them now, especially as plus three is done. Revelation on everything. But the gold base is still there. It's not mining, and oh no. Astraea blocked his potential fifth base, or his potential sixth base. That is very fair, Mighty Vibir. And this one hasn't been terrible, but there are definitely times when I'm casting a WTL match and I just am screaming at the observer internally. Now Harstum, he gets on top of a base, and this is where things start to get a little bit scary. Yes, uh, Harstum is losing some workers, but Estrella has lost so many more there as the Stalkers, well, they're going to kite back towards towards the Stasis Trap. And that is not going to work out for him, though, but here we go. Okay, Estrella blinks forward. Stasis Trap does not go off. Estrella takes an incredible fight in this position, but part of it was, I think, that Harstum, while he is, his setup is in a pretty good spot, a large portion of his army was fighting the workers, and he had... Zealots on the left side. He's an army all over the place. That main army that he was fighting with, not as powerful. But he does knock down the ghoul base that Astraea really has not mined from for the most part. And now, plus one armor is on the way. And more importantly, disruptors are starting to hit the field. Harstum finally hitting. Finally getting to that next level of tech. 14 minutes in, the first time we get disruptors. And now DTs, they blink on top of the cannon. There's only one of them. So this actually is going to be a problem. There is detection here. Right? Yeah, there is actually. So, and a second cannon finishes just in time. So the Zealots, yeah, they're going to be able to chase this down with the DTs as well. Nice job there, Harstum. But he's got pressure at the front as well. A couple DTs in the army. Lots of Zealots. And disruptor from around this side is going to get a Zealot. But now this has been revealed. How does Astraea choose to play this game? His upgrades, his plus three, just about done. And oh, look, look at this. Look at what Harstum's doing. It's such a bait. It's such a bait. He gets so many zealots. And now the DT, or excuse me, the disruptors, they have to run. But Harstum was a little bit too far away, so we can't really capitalize on it. Not just yet. That was almost brilliant, but unfortunately not enough. And still, Harstum takes a pretty good fight. And he's zoned out his opponent from the north side base, slapping him back down onto four bases here. And the Zealots, they move forward. Astraea, he can be on the high ground just fine. He actually, he's got a big flank coming in from the right side. Astraea seems almost certain to lose the base. But if he gets the army of Harstum, maybe that's going to be enough. DT run by as well, knocking down the cannon. Shield battery overcharges pop. There's nothing for it to heal. And the DTs, they're getting so much here. They're distracting Harstum. The Stalkers, though, they're going to be able to keep their Disruptor alive. Astraea now down 40 supply, but he has knocked down the bottom side base from Harstum. Knocking him back down to five bases, but well... Astraea really only on four for the moment. And the Disruptors continue to, to come out on the map. Great revelation there, actually. And the Oracles, they're going to show up as well. And, well, okay. Disruptors not going to kill them, but we'll force them back. Archon's getting uh, getting warped in and, and recalled out. So there is that. And Archon's are a good thing to have anyways in this matchup with how heavy the Zealot count 
is from Harstim. One more on the way. Five more Stalkers. Disruptors forcing Astraea to not be able to take the fight on the retreat. But Harstim is only on two Disruptors in this army. This is still punishable. This is still something that Astraea can make do with. But now he's going to try to take the fight. Archon showing it from the left side. Getting pretty juicy shots on the Zealots. All things considered. But as the balls go out, Astraea has to retreat. I recall it does work on Morphing Archons. Emperor Fubal, that's what we saw Astraea do right there. Oh, Harstim. Flanks on top of his opponent once again. If he can get those Archons, it's going to be so much easier for the man. But for right now, he can afford to trade evenly. He doesn't have to take a cost-effective trade at this point with how much better his economy is, with how much more bank he has, with how much more supply he has. Taking off 50 supply from each, it, puts, it still gives him something, and well, Australia will just have not nearly as much. But Australia is trying to expand everywhere on the map. He's got two Nexus on the way at the same time. Three DTs are not enough, and he's going to find... Well, okay, Harstam is kind of every base on the north side here. Uh, Blinks, and this is a bit of an awkward engagement, though. The base will barely not fall. Okay, it goes down the last second, last side blade of the Zealot, but the Destructors continue to fall down, and Australia continues to take amazing fight. Astraea continues to take amazing fight after amazing fight, but really the question is whether he'll ever have the money to properly make that worthwhile. So though Astraea, he's, he's got to find money in, in some way, shape, or form. He's got some level of a bank right now, but that's just the bank to kind of get a warp in happening. He has not been able to really even establish a fifth for the majority of this game. Now, a Harstim will find his fifth base canceled, or... Yeah, he will find his fifth base. Oh, Disruptor Shot. There we go. A bowling for Stalkers indeed. But Harstim has another base that he cares about more on the north side. And that really is all that matters at this point. A Disruptor will fall. Stalkers blink forward. They're going to get the second. But this is just buying time. There we go. That's going to be a recall. Is anything going to get punished? A, a Zealot falls. Okay. Uh, Astraea gets out for the most part. And now it's four, it's four bases again. Astraea... The fact, the fact that he's still in this game, much like the Ragnarok series earlier, is, is kind of impressive, but it feels like he's just ever so slowly bleeding out. And this may just be it. Nine workers have fallen. Another base will be soon to be denied. Stalkers getting on top of the Archons as much as they can. And even if the Archons aren't there, I mean, these Zealots, they have plus two armor. They, they are beefier than they would otherwise be. D DT's on the other side. Disruptor shot. We barely saw the aftermath. Gets yet more. Another fifth base from Astraea will be denied. And Astraea... He's really, we're starting to really see his economy drop through the floor here. He's, yeah, he does not have enough. Harstim seals the week 4 1 for the rebellion, but he had to fight damn hard for it. One final game, folks, on the upper side in the blue. He took a marathon game number one. He is Harstim. And the bottom side of the map in the red. He is down one game in this series. He can no longer win this series, but at least he can tie it up 1-1. Take some pride. It is Max Angel, Astraea. And yeah, we talked about what would happen if Shopify wins the week, but not enough about what would happen if Alpha X wins the week. Technically, Alpha X, it's, it's no longer possible, but if Alpha X was able to knock off the Shopify Rebellion... They move into first place. Now, Onside plays uh, Psystorm tomorrow, and likely Psystorm were Shopify. Well, Onside would reclaim that throne, but briefly, Alpha X could put itself in first place. Instead, they will maintain second. And Shopify now joins into a tie for third with Dragon Phoenix Gaming and Psystorm, although still on the bottom. Well, actually, no, sorry, tie in points. But Shopify's map score is not nearly as good as Psystorm as, as DPG. Uh, so they will still be in fifth place, but they will be tied in points. So. Yes, my girlfriend. Uh, thank you, Claire. <laughs> Say hi to Spearman to everyone. Um, she's decided to show up in, in chat and 
Say hi. Um. <laughs> what is life? I. My fan, my only fan, is is currently drying out a towel, so I can't reach. I can't go and grab my only fan. Anyways, uh, this is, of course, Moon Dance. It is, again, a map that you don't tend to go single gate expand on, but Harstam is getting his expand much quicker. Meanwhile, Australia, he's going to be going for four gate blink, three gate blink, something like that. Ah, that's a good. <laughs> yes, I'm being harassed by my girlfriend in the workplace. <laughs> this is unacceptable. What is this? Oh, no, 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 no. Australia finds two adepts in the main base. And as good as Hearthstone, look, this is a great way to end a game very quickly indeed. Now, there is some defense. And actually, the, the Guardian Shield is, is keeping things alive a little bit longer. But the Sentry will fall. Two workers have fallen. Make it three. It, it may even be... Yeah, it's going to be four. So, four probes have fallen and a Sentry. That is absolutely disastrous for Hearthstone. Especially as Australia... Well, he's going for what will be, I assume, three or four gate blink. Yes, there's a Nexus on the way, but... I got I feel like this this has got to be a fake nexus. Although, as I say that, Australia is building probes, so maybe not. Yeah, um Claire, I move to a better state. Like, well, Texas is not a better state. <laughs> Even as much as you live there, and that, you know, that, that is like the one thing it's got going for it. Texas is not a better state. <laughs> hmm. Have I convinced her to play this game, Kabuki? No, I have not, unfortunately. Um. But. I think I have convinced her to play like 3v, like 3v AI or whatever. Um, when Stormgate comes out, actually... We should convince Claire to uh, play. I should convince Claire to play uh, co-op with me. Play it on easy mode. Do a drinking stream. Have, convince Claire to play co-op. <laughs> well, okay. Okay. So, two things Texas has going for it: Ember Football. It's again, like, adapts find their way into the main base here from Harsh. I mean, yeah, the map doesn't matter as much anymore, but Shopify sorely needs map score wins, so this is not great for them. Five more probes have fallen, but Harstam does have two oracles in the air, so maybe he can get some counter damage. Agreed. No, no, yeah, I love living in New Hampshire. I mean, it, Vermont might be nicer, but um, New Hampshire has no income tax, and that's very, very nice. Yeah, uh, because these these games are from Replay, Claire. I am there, there's no delay. Um, it's when I'm gonna start casting EPT Korea in about ten minutes that so there will be a delay. But okay, Australia, he does have a proxy on the north side. He's got a gate the gateway there too. So the question now is how long until he closes this game out? But yeah, anyway, so Texas has two things going for it. It's got Claire, it's got my girlfriend, and um, and Sarah's from there, <laughs> and Clem, and anyone else who is a European that that America tries to claim. Pittsburgh is absolutely not the Northeast. This is true. Pittsburgh is the Mid Atlantic. But okay, Harstam, at the very least, he has found the proxy pylon that has caused so many issues for him. And the game is surprisingly going on. Harstam is now only down about three workers. But charge is on the way. So, Australia is going to get a scout up. Yes, there is that third base. Pretty much done. Actually, it is done. 
from Harstim. But considering the... I, it's actually so insane that Harstim is really not down by all that much. He's, he's down swell, as I say that. Astraea's third base was faster, so... Chrono is a powerful thing. Astraea is now... He's up six workers. Uh, he has charge on the way. His robo is much faster. That is actually, I guess, where we're starting to see the leads. Not necessarily in supply, but in the quality of the supply that uh, Astraea has been able to build for himself for the most part. But the question then is, how does this game start to break down as an observer will fall? Nice tag there on the Oracle. But how does this game start to break down? How does Astraea start to leverage the leads that he has in tech? Really, it is in tech. The economy is starting to equalize, not that they're both on three bases. Uh, how does he start to equalize that in a way that actually allows him to win this game? Or does the game go late again? Do we get to see some fantastic late game PvP? Does Harstim clutch it out? I mean, he has brought himself pretty far back into this game. He doesn't have an immortal, or actually he doesn't have immortals, which is probably the biggest thing that it, the biggest deficit that he's dealing with at the moment. Astraea. And the Adepts find their way. The Adepts of Astraea this game have just been absolutely disgusting. But at the very least, uh, one Adept will fall. I the Shield Battery here. It's not going to get a second. So it's only three workers this time. But Astraea seems to be getting ready for something. He's got a Warp Prism on the way. Although, at this point, it might just be for, uh, might just be for harassment. And the big... What we're seeing now is, though, is, is Harstam, he's trying to find his... He's trying to find a way back into this game. Now... You and I are looking at this, we say, okay, upgrades are pretty similar. Uh, Astraea's a little faster, but not by all that much. Army supply is pretty similar. Worker count is pretty similar. The only big deal is in terms of tech, and that there are immortals for, for Astraea that Harstam does not have. Nice target fire there from Astraea. Knocks down an Oracle. But Harstam, if he gets away with this, with this much faster fifth base... That will allow him to do what he did last game in a very similar fashion. Just leveraged his money to build, to max out faster, to start trading even evenly, but it didn't matter because he had so much more money behind him. And then, well, Astraea was just not able to get as much done. Harstam then got into tech transitions. He got into disruptors that Astraea never found. And, well, that happened. Talk about alcohol and eggnog, though. I'm so sad. I plan to make aged eggnog this year where you make eggnog, but you make it boozy enough that it doesn't spoil and you stick it in the fridge for a month. But I'm going to be in Texas for Christmas, and I cannot fly with, like, half a, a half gallon or more of, of, of boozy eggnog. <laughs> it's very sad. Uh, but okay, Harstam, he's now on 80 workers. He's going even above. Wow, he's even going above that one. But it seems like for now, Astraea's fine. Okay, Astraea has found the left side base and he's going to try to put something onto it. I'm not totally sure what those aggressive units are. DTs, that makes sense. But with the cannons here and the shield batteries and no TT blink just yet. And even then, it's not enough Dark Templar. But okay, DT Blink just about done, Stalkers. They do move forward. But okay, it's 2-2. Two -two. Uh, Harstam does not have the big upgrade lead he had in game one. Right? The, neither does Astraea, though, and Astraea certainly could have had that. But Astraea has moved into Disruptor play, and Harstam is now two bases up on Astraea. He's up 14 workers, so his economy, if he's able to keep this, ha keep this alive, is going to be incredible. But the DTs, there is no cannons here. Yes, there was on the bottom base, sure, but this one woefully undefended. So 11 probes go down. Harstam still has that lead, but 11 probes fall. Shield battery overcharge, trying to last as long as possible to keep this base alive. But now, oh, Harstam's trapped in a corner. He's blinking away a little bit slowly. This may be what Astraea was looking for. He's up 30 army supplies. Zealous getting really good concaves here, and the, the disruptors 
only just now starting to join the fray. DT is pretty much in every base. Stocks blink forward. They get one, they get two, and here comes the Disruptor from Astray. He tries to track where the blink is going to be, but he's not going to be able to get that one. But here we go. More Zealots warping in. Stalkers on the front line, blinking backwards. Immortals doing true immortal things. And the Stalkers here from Harstim, he just cannot blink enough. Astray have found the break. The shots are too powerful. The supply is too strong. And Astraea, he ties this series up 1-1, but it does not matter because Harstim, he took the first map. And it is a 4-2 Shopify lead, moving into a tie in points for third place. And Alpha X fails to take first.